All right, hello everybody. I am back for a golf clash video for the golden shot here. And as you can see, there is two different difficulty levels on the Hollywood course. And I am going to let's just start with uh, this one. It's funny because I think the hard is actually easier than the medium to actually get. So I think you guys are going to have very good success with this. Um, I did play this for the rookie tournament. If you saw um, the method that I used on the rookie hole, if you look up uh, rookie hole number seven for an isolated view of this hole, it will be very similar. Uh, this will have just a little bit more wind, but it will be the same technique. So what I did for that shot was about three and a half to four backspin-ish. And landed it kind of in those two shadows up there. So that's more or less what you're going to see. What you're going to want to focus on more than anything, just so you guys know, to keep you guys in mind, is whichever way the wind is pointed, you are going to want to you know, counter it in the opposing direction to keep your ball from, you know, going sideways. That's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, the other th important thing for this hole to note is that uh, there is a hill left and long. So you do want to stay pretty tight. So for the mo most part, you're going to see me, you know, keep the back spin up pretty high. Uh, that's going to be the nice strategy for this hole is to keep it away from the left. So if you're going to great ball, make sure you great ball right to the right. It'll at least give you a chance to at least catch a ring. If you great ball to the left, chances are you're going down the hill. So I do want you to be cautious about that. Um, you know, pretty standard prizes here. You're going to see, you know, nothing's uh, that's very typical. Is what you're going to see. Let's go over the bag. We know that we are going to be dealing with the, you know, rookie tee here, which is going to be 66 accuracy, 1.7 per ring. So at 1.7 per ring, if you take a look at the five to seven mile per hour wind, that means all adjustments that you're going to do is going to be between three and four rings. So 1.7 times three is 5.1 but close enough for all intents and purposes. So three rings if the wind is approaching five, and you'll go four rings if it's all the way up to seven. So keep that in mind, and uh, let's just get this thing on the road. So like I mentioned, oh, and here you're seeing straight into the face. Let's see where we are very close to max club. So keep that in mind when you're doing your adjustments. You have to worry a little bit. And you see how it's right to left as well. So that's going to push the ball towards the hill. So I'm not going to side spin this. And you can see where it's kind of hopping. I would anticipate this being pretty good. Now I would usually jam it up to maybe four backspin. But I don't think I can do that here. Because as you could see, I was kind of right at max club or close to max club so here you're going to see me go at it like this maybe three backspin just a little bit of curl and like i said be wary of pulling it to the right and there you're seeing i did not quite hop it to that fairway so you might have to add just a touch of power on those strong headwinds so keep that in mind and I am going to give you guys a pretty good tutorial video here. I was fortunate to have a donor who, uh, you know, contributed to my uh, account via Messenger. I don't know how he did it, but he sent me some funds and I told him, well, I'll put together, you know, a pretty decent video for you sending me the funds. And it is one of the guys on the group. Who remain who wish to remain anonymous I would prefer to just tell you guys who it is but I am going to just basically keep him anonymous as he wishes and here you see I'm going to ever so gently um, just kind of curve it to the right and about three and a half backspin and like I said you know towards four rings
So you want to go towards four rings when you are at Max Club. Oh, geez. Again, coming up short. So as you can see, that's going to be the biggest challenge here. You want to avoid taking off that backspin. You got to be very aggressive on those headwinds. The tailwinds are going to be the ones where we can get a little bit more aggressive. And as you can see, I'm just not quite getting my bearings set real quick. But uh, we should be good to go now because we don't have a headwind and there should be no threat to hit that rough again at least for this one so here you're going to see me do the same thing a little bit closer to four backspin kind of land it towards the fringe with just a little bit of right spin just to kind of you know straighten out the line to make sure it doesn't roll down the hill and as you can see with this one we're going to have uh another perfect ball not too bad let's see how this one comes in and here it's coming straight at the pin almost got the hole in one so you're gonna see these are gonna be the aggressive wins where I can just kind of take advantage of this hole no problem it's gonna be more of the tailwind we'll we'll, we'll get a, a bearing on that uh, into the into the winch oh of course 12 cats what just what I needed thanks guys so in case you were wondering about my tournament chest as well not one usable club. Um, I have 12 epics that still need to be maxed, and I got none of them. And as you can see from that chest, another epic that I have no use for. It's really getting tiresome to see that on repeat. So, a little disappointing that they can't figure out a way to spread the cards out a little bit better because I'm really just fed up with getting the same things over and over it's, it's just getting very annoying and here you're going to see you know very similar approach about four backspin land it right around the fringe towards max club and notice the way that the wind is pushing you know same thing is going to apply here that you're not going to need that extra up oh, up oh, we are going into max so instead of because i'm getting a little short of time what it, what what i might want to do would be to, um, yep, great ball. That might not be the end of the world. So let's see what a great ball looks like. Cause it might still sneak in. Nope, if you just, just great ball it too much. So you could see time-wise, I was getting a little out of time. Um, I would have liked to adjust my spin there, but I had no idea that I was gonna need to go into power there. And you could see time-wise, I was getting a little low and did not want to risk it. So here, you are seeing a straight downwind. You're gonna see me put it more towards max. And we're just gonna crank up the, uh, the backspin here. And you can see what I'm doing kind of with my spin. I'm not going to uh, spin it to the left because it's not going to need it. It's gonna kind of carry itself over towards the hole. And like I said, you know, make sure that you are putting your backspin up as high as possible on shots like this and you know you're gonna go in between three and four on a six wind three and a half rings oh geez another great ball to the right I'm assuming this one may sneak in we'll see nope so you need to be very careful of your great ball if your timing is just off you can see how you know this can just go downhill in a hurry you're seeing me really butcher this golden shot for whatever reason. And let's see if we can't get a little bit of rhythm here. You saw what happened with me last time. Now this time I am going to be spinning it towards the hill. So here you see what I'm doing with my spin. Because the wind is pointed to the right. So it's going to resist going down the hill. And you can see what I'm doing in terms of distance. You know, I need to make sure that I get it to the fairway this time so i need to be very careful and you're going to see me just slightly go into power here oh geez another great ball i hope this does not go down the hill of course it's going down the hill so as you can see my timing is my biggest enemy here because that choose it, it might have been a hole in one like that was perfect speed and it rolls down the hill so you can see how important your timing is going to be on this shootout 
And this is just a little bit disappointing to see me just butcher this as bad as I am, with, and especially with my perfect ball timing. But I am going to hang in there, and we are going to try to get this knocked out real quick. And same kind of thing as before. You know, you're going to spin it to the left when the wind is pointed to the right. You need to really counter the effects of that. And, you know, same thing. Once you, once you start to get a feel and you, you know, saw something you did and you know that, uh, you know, going into power was what you needed, that's what... Oh, my goodness. How is this happening? <sighs> so, unbelievable. I'm getting the absolute worst wins you can get and just completely butchering them. So let's re-up here. Like I mentioned before, you know, I do have, um, you know, my, one of the guys from the groups just gave me, you know, 20, $25 to, uh, for whatever. And so I decided that uh, I'm just going to essentially put it back in for you guys for, a pretty good uh, tutorial here um, and you can see the biggest enemy that you can have is not hitting your perfect ball I thought it was going to be a little bit more forgiving than it is and it is not and look what I'm doing with the ball trail putting it just short of the fringe going about three three and a half rings there since it's pointed straight downwind and let's give this a go here we go finally a perfect ball so I'm assuming this is going to come in reasonably good here just too much speed so you just got to play around with that uh, backspin and topspin there you see a castaway card that's one of the ones that I don't have maxed I would have been fine with getting castaways this tournament you see guys complaining about that and it's one of the ones that I actually don't have maxed so I'd rather see that than the same stuff over and over that I have no use for so a little disappointing that that keeps happening and you can see that I'm into the wind again here so I'm going to be going right towards max club and there you can see what I'm doing with my side spin which is lowering it to only three bars and I know I'm gonna need to push this into max just slightly so that's what you can see me doing I'm going to make sure, I hope, that I get it over this uh, fairway here. There we go. Finally got one up there for you guys. Almost got the hole in one. And you can see, you know, it's, it's going to be more about your perfect ball timing here than anything. And it would be nice to get this hole in one. It is going to be very manageable to get this hole in one, but uh, also very wind dependent. As you can see, the downwinds are a lot easier than the headwinds. Um, you don't want to need to go into extra power to get this hole, as you can see me doing. And when it's into the wind, or when it's downwind like this, you're going to see me, you know, crank up the uh, spin just a little bit. And you can see how it's, you know, helping from the right to the left. You're going to see me just gently break it back to the right side here because the momentum of the wind should carry it towards the cliff. And again, you know, perfect ball is going to be the biggest thing that you need to be aware of and be confident with and almost had it, just left it short. So you can see the way the way that I'm, you know, doing the technique is relatively spot on. It's basically just a thing of hitting your perfect ball. Um, I will go ahead and try to give you guys one or two more attempts at that hole in one, and probably just call it, unless I really, really hone in on this thing and start getting all over it every single shot. So now I can start to bring it in with a little bit more speed, make sure it at least gets to the hole. So here you're going to see me, instead of cranking the backspin, I'm going to just gently back off of it just a little bit because of the fact that, uh, and again, just make sure that you're going four rings 
on when you're pushing seven miles per hour here. So here you're gonna see me push this into the tree. Perfect ball. And here you're gonna see me getting much more aggressive. Make sure that it gets to the hole because it doesn't matter if I send it down the cliff at this point. It just needs to basically ricochet the pin and I can get this sucker. And here you're seeing another very challenging win. So let's see if I can't pull this off for you guys. This is gonna be kind of the more challenging one. And I am going to try to go at it with just a little bit of left spin and just under three top spin, back spin, sorry. And as you could see the way that I was aiming originally, you do kind of need to go into max. So make sure that on these winds, you are pushing it down into max. And then in addition, I'm gonna also make sure that I still add on just a touch and let's see how this one comes in. I did get it onto the fairway, so that's a that's a plus. And just missing, just missing. So there is the technique. I'm starting to show you a little bit better as to what you need to do. I will just go ahead for you guys and do this one more time. If I miss it, I'm just gonna give up on this. I'm not really too worried about it. Had I not wasted those first five balls, I would have easily cleared the chest with these last five. So my perfect ball timing finally started coming back into place here and started hitting definitely better quality shots in this second one. And here you can see what I did with the backspin. You know, I'm taking just a little bit off um, and more so because of the fact that, uh, you know, I. I already have all the rings knocked out, so I can start to be a little bit more aggressive. And I'm going to go right around four rings here. Perfect ball. And hopefully I get lucky. Come on, one last try. Nope. I'm just going to give up on this thing. Not too worried about it. Don't need cards on this. Don't need nine berserkers. Uh, don't really care. So we are going to move on to the other golden shot which is arguably going to be a little bit more challenging for you guys um i'm going to go ahead and go over things um there's kind of two shots that you want to focus on here one is the left and one is the straight so those are probably going to be the only two um and as opposed to the other one where you wanted to stay between you know three and four rings with your adjustments here, we're probably gonna have an iron again, I'm assuming, from the rookie tees. Um, it's a little bit harder from the rookie tees. I'm not a huge fan of this shot from the rookie tees. I had a little bit more success from the with the wood because I could backspin it and where. So it kind of, when I go straight at this one, it kind of comes in two different methods. So it either come in and kind of roll past the hole or it'll come in and it'll check up. And I had good control over that with a wood, not so much with an iron. It was, a, it was very much more hard to go forward straight at the hole with an iron. Um, I could not get that consistent bounce. So that's going to be the one thing that you are going to want to uh, focus on if you are going at the pin directly. Um, the only other method that I think you should consider is the left approach. And essentially, you know, the left is going to be easiest. Any wind pointed towards the right. So any wind pointed to the right, you're probably going to see me go left. Any wind pointed left, you're probably going to see me go straight. So I'm going to basically divide between those two methods. And of course, you know, it's gonna be the same golden shot iron, so 1.7 per ring. We're gonna keep all adjustments between two and three rings this time. So, you know, that's gonna be a, a pretty good estimate. Almost two rings is gonna be, you know, three miles per hour. And five is going to be three rings. So we'll keep all our adjustments, no matter what, between two and three rings. Um, as you can see, you know, perfect ball timing is going to be of the utmost importance. 
So that is going to be something that uh, you're going to want to uh, focus on. And let's just go in here. And here you can see this wind is pointed to the right. So that was the one where I mentioned that I was going to go at this with just right spin here. And I don't believe you need much backspin. I just try to land it a little bit short, kind of like this. And you can see where I'm pointed at. And like I said, you know, two to three rings. So let's see what this looks like. And again, you know, the biggest thing is going to be your perfect ball when you're going this way. So you want to make sure that you're very on point. And did I get the, what did they give me? Red? Oh, just rolled out of yellow. So I almost had yellow right off the bat. This is going to be a very challenging one for the hole in one. I think the other one you're going to be able to get. So I was able to get it in the tournament on rookie. Um, and I think uh, you guys will probably get the hard hole more than likely if you can hone in on my technique um, and you know watch my video a couple times you could see the way that I was playing around with the spin you're gonna want to do the same kind of thing and I think this one for you um, getting that hole in one is gonna be just a tiny bit more challenging and here you're seeing another right wind so I am going to stick with this method and said this time you're gonna see me put on some backspin and try to go for the same landing zone, which is right around here. And we will go two and a half rings, somewhere in that effect. Perfect ball. And let's see how this comes in. It's looking pretty good. So there you're seeing that blue chest. I do need to uh, reply to that. So give me one minute real quick. And like I was mentioning, you know, you're just going to want to play around with the spin a little bit. And you can see what I was doing with my... Uh, You can see what I was doing there with the spin, just kind of, since it was downwind, I was cranking it up just slightly. And here you're seeing we are getting a very similar wind. So I am going to go at this very similarly. Uh, for the most part, left is going to be, you know, my my shot of choice. You can see what I'm doing with my landing zone here. And again, right around two, two and a half rings. Just concentrate on that uh, perfect ball timing. Let's see how this one comes in. It's coming in just a little bit far. So I am kind of all over this hole, but just can't quite get that spin down. Now I would like to show you guys just a little bit of left winds because I'm probably, as you can see how hard I'm getting it over to the right, any wind to the left, it's gonna make it that much more challenging to get it to the hole. And so that's why I'm gonna go more straight at it with the other wind. And again, when it's into the wind like this, you're going to see me no backspin and still kind of pick that same landing zone where it's, you can see what, what I'm doing with where I'm putting it kind of up towards the fringe. I am going to just gently backspin it. Let's see if that doesn't get it where I need it. And right around two and a half rings here. So let's try this. Ah, so that one. And you're going to see firsthand kind of the effect. Oh, it's still going towards the hole at least. Not terrible. I thought that, uh, you know, and depending on how it bounces off that hill, when you're not accurate, it's going to vary. 
Uh, you know, you, I can't guarantee that I'm always going to come in. And hopefully the reason that we're getting all these right to left winds is because, I mean, maybe this there's more to it than just, uh, you know, what you're actually seeing. Maybe this is, you know, just to kind of help people because, uh, you know, I, th I think you're going to have a lot of trouble getting it towards the hole without this wind. And here you'll see me go two rings for this three and a half. And perfect ball. Let's see if I can't climb the hill here and get it towards the hole. It looks like it's going towards the hole. I come on, just give me that ring. I'm not going to, you know, get overly concerned um, with this account. Um, so, you know, I might just take this one shot and just kind of go on to my other account. And uh, if I can get some other wins, I might uh, just, up. Oh, here we go. Here's another wind. And this is kind of the wind where I was mentioning that I'm just going to go more straight at the hole. Um, like I mentioned though, so this is going to be good for one, for one specific reason. Uh, the most important is you're going to be able to get it online for that, uh, gold ring every time. So here you see the only problem is, is there's kind of two bounces and you kind of need to, to master in between the two. Here you're going to see me go two rings. And like I said, there's going to be one that just kind of rolls through pretty far. And the other one is going to uh, check up as soon as it lands. So, and that's not too bad. Too bad it didn't catch the hole. But you can see kind of the benefit to the straight at approach, how tight I could get that. And you saw what I did with my spin. Um, it'd be nice to know one way or the other what my wind is going to be but let me just pull one more shot here see if i can't get another left wind for you guys it looks like i am not um, i am going to recommend any wind that's not um let's let's just since this is straight let's just point this at the hole let's see if i can't just get this and you see from what I did last time, I'm going to need to up the, the backspin just a little bit. So here you see me almost pushing two bars now because it's straight downwind. And you see what I'm doing with the way that I'm pointing it. You're going to need to land it very aggressively. So, you know, right around three rings, it's going to be probably about perfect. Make sure that you hit the fairway. And there's a perfect ball. Let's see if I can't get this to climb the hill. And go towards the hole and just missed so you can kind of see the two approaches I'm going to just stop this video here for you guys you got you kind of get the uh, idea um, I'm not too worried about this account for myself uh, it would have been nice to get that fire chest as tight as I was with like six of those balls but uh, no big deal like I said um, there's really no added benefit for anything that I can get on this account Unfortunately, um, there, I mean, there's a few good cards that I can get. That would be nice to have a couple extra cards, but a couple cards isn't going to be the big difference for me. It really needs to come from a tournament chest because I'm like, you know, a hundred cards away. And so, um, you know, not too big deal. Um, as, as you can see, you know, I think you're going to have great success with this hole. Uh, you won't find it very challenging at all. Like I said, any, just to reiterate here, any um, left wind, just make sure you take the straight approach here. And any right wind, um, as you can see, it's very favorable to go the left route. So good luck with your golden shot. I uh, wish you guys all the luck. And um, let me know how it goes. And uh, if, if for some reason, you know, I get a bunch of wins, uh, on my other account, then I will be sure to uh, post those for you guys as well for kind of like a second part. But uh, you can see the technique I, I pretty much got down um, for you guys. So I think, you know, just playing with your spins a little bit and just getting it honed in on that perfect zone there, yeah, and you guys will be good to go. So good luck with this golden shot. And uh, be on the lookout for... Uh, other video posts of mine. 
And uh, thanks for watching. If you have yet to subscribe, feel free to do so or share this video with whoever you like. And uh, take care, guys. See you guys on the next one.